And well, glory to God, uh, uh, it has uh, thus far been a real blessing to be here in the Detroit area uh, with uh, uh, Pastor McFadden and Pastor Gunther and Pastor Reese and uh, uh, and and all all of my old friends that I've run into and new friends that uh, uh, that I've made here. And my heart today is uh, just so filled with with uh, with just joy. And I'm just so blessed to be here. And what a what a great crowd right here. I'll tell you, you guys, you guys were having these uh, Bible quizzes and stuff. And I knew a lot of the answers, but they sure weren't popping in my brain as fast as they were popping in y'all's brain. Let me tell you. That. <laughs> hey, man. Well, um, you know, I guess the theme tonight or this today is um, choices, right? The, the theme is choices. And uh, uh, we've had a, a, a focus on um on your choices and how important choices are in our life because everything everything in life comes down to kind of a fork in the road. And uh, if you come Sunday morning here or next Sunday morning at Brother Gunther's church, then I'll give my whole testimony and you can kind of see uh, uh, where the wrong choices will take you and maybe see some things you don't want to do. But another aspect of choices this morning uh, is God's choice. You know, God, God, God makes, makes decisions and, and he, he makes choices and he does some choosing himself. And, and trust me, we're not going to five point Calvinism right now. Amen. (laughs) All right. That's not what we're talking about at all. But, uh, but, but let's, let's maybe take a little look this morning at, uh, 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 Maybe how how God does God does some some choosing like like the brother was talking about with with Josiah he was chosen and uh, Amen. Well, here, here's another guy that was uh, that was chosen. Uh, go with me if you will to the book of Judges and chapter three. Judges chapter three. And I'm going to go ahead and pray before we dive in to the text. Father, we do love you this morning. And uh, first and foremost, Lord, we're, we're thank you for our salvation. We thank you for, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you for the blood, Lord. We thank you to just be saved today. And um, God, uh, thank you for this meeting. Um, Lord, just we continue to bless in this meeting. Uh, Lord, take this old jailbird out of the way. And uh, somehow, some way, give me some some words that would uh, edify, exhort, encourage your people here in in this in this room today. And we'll be careful to give you all, all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we look in Judges chapter three, and uh, we'll start reading. Uh, I guess around verse fifteen it says, "But uh, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord." The Lord raised him up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. And by him, the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. So uh, uh, today I'll tell you that, uh, uh, that God is looking for a few good men and a few good ladies, amen. amen. And uh, uh, and and you can be, you can be that chosen one that amen. God wants amen. to use. Amen. Ezekiel twenty two and thirty says, uh, "And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the Lord, that I should not destroy it." But I found none. But you notice in the in the verse right here, uh, there's something. Ehud is probably not got the first choice in man's eyes, but he was the first choice in God's eyes. And it said that it said that uh, uh, that old Ehud was left-handed. How many people in here are left-handed? Show of hands. Okay, gotcha. All right. You see, left-handed is a minority, right? Left, left, left-handed, and and life is hard for left-handed people. And I know that my ex-wife was left-handed. 
right? And so life is hard for left-handed people because everything is designed for right-handed people. Yeah. You know, if you wanted to play baseball, you had to go get a special glove. You know, you wanted to shoot, you got to get a special grip on your gun. Uh, and you're always bumping elbows with somebody when you're trying to eat. I mean, life is hard for the left for, for left-handed people, right? And uh, but see, that, so we wouldn't have thought that if God was looking to choose somebody and to use somebody, they would choose an old lefty, right? But uh, it goes a little deeper than that, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of us uh, uh, have left handedness in many different ways. Yeah. Right. A lot of us are broken and awkward right. and, and, and don't fit and uh, got something something wrong right. from from the beginning. And uh, uh and we just called us left. We could just call us all a, a, a little bit left-handed. And definitely, in the eyes of the world, we're bumping elbows. We're not fitting in, and, and thing, things that are made for the world. They, they, we're not clicking with that. We're standing out like a sore thumb. They don't think we're the cool kids, right? Amen. Uh, so, um, you know, so when we think of the left-handed, I think they, they goes a, it goes a little deeper than that. And uh, over in Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 16, uh, he says, uh, um, uh, says, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of the seed in th their generation that hath any, any blemish, amen, any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. And uh, uh, whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. He said, a blind man or a lame or he that hath a flat nose. And oh, by the way, let me just stop right here and let you know that the only thing the Bible says is flat is this nose right here. So if, if you want that, if you want that flat earth stuff, you know, you can believe whatever you want. Stay, stay, away, stay away from me. Amen. Amen. But uh, listen, listen, anybody that had a flat nose and that wasn't even with the price of admission. All right. Uh, a man that is, look at verse 19, or a man that is broken footed or broken hand or crook back or dwarf or he hath had a blemish in his eye or be scurvy or scab or have his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest, shall come nigh to make the offering. So I say today that we ain't, some of us, we, we, we ain't just left-handed. We crook back. We broke back. We flat-nosed. We, 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 we half-retarded. And so I know that's not a politically correct term in this day and age, but we look in the mirror and we say, surely I'm not the one. Surely I'm I'm not the one that God wants to use. I mean I'm I'm this and and I'm that. They think I'm this and and they think I'm that. So Ehud was not the guy that we would have picked out to be called of God to deliver Israel in their hour of need. So uh, we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29, uh, he says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Oh, praise God. But God has chosen, God has chosen the foolish things, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things that are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are that no flesh that no flesh should glory in His presence. Amen. Amen. So as we continue along in the text, we see that He has chosen this left-handed, crookback, walking backwards, funny-looking guy, this Ehud. And uh, look at verse 16. But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges. Amen. That sounds awful familiar to me. I, I think of Ephesians 6, 17, which says to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I think of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 that says that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints of the marrow. And he's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. And it said that Ehud, he said he made him a two-edged two sword. Huh? He made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. This would be something like a Roman short sword. 
This is, this is probably a little bigger than you would think of just, just a, li a little dagger. This was probably a, a, a short sword. And this sword that he made, um, the word here, well, I'm going to get to that. Let me get to that. Let's stop that. All right, so take the word of God, and he strapped it on. He was ready. In prison, we, that's what we would have called it in prison. So you strap? I'm strapped. You know, hey, yeah. Are you, you, it, it, out here on the street, y'all, y'all, y'all got these. So it's like, you packing? You packing? You know, in, in, pri in prison, they were just strapped. They didn't, they didn't, didn't have that. They didn't have that in there. But he, he got strapped. It said that he, he girded under his raiment upon his right thigh, and he brought up the present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. Eglon was a very fat man. If I was going to entitle my message today, it's called, Life Ain't Easy When You're Fat and Greasy. <laughs> but we are talking a spiritual application. We are not making fun of anybody's Baptist belly this morning, okay? Don't anybody get self-conscious about this. But let me tell you where that let me tell you where we'll pick we'll pick this up right where we left off here. But let me tell you how the genesis of this message, where the, the, this is not the first time I preached this message, but here's the first time I preached this message. This is where it came from. I was the pastor of the church for the last 10 years that I was in prison. And uh, my job every day was to get up and go down to the chapel and hold chapel services for the last decade I was in prison. And my cellmate was a guy named Dane Ely. And Dane Ely was a good man, an honorable man. Hey, he had character. He had loyalty. I mean, uh, uh, hey, we ended up being cellmates for five and a half years. That's a long time to live in the bathroom with another dude. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, 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 but Dane, he's an old convict, done almost as much time as me, and I did 30 years. And, uh, and it, but, he was somebody to ride the river with. He was somebody to be back to back with against, against the world, but he didn't know the Lord. Dane wasn't saved. Dane was an old, was an old, wise, old outlaw, and he was just cynical and he was skeptical. And he was just like, man, you know, I just don't believe that stuff, man. Whatever, whatever, you know, I, I don't believe that stuff. But hey, five and a half years, uh, there, there was something about him that God had put me in there with him and drew to him, and we became closer than brothers during that time. Now, he knew what I did, and so I would occasionally say, man, why don't you come up to the chapel and see what I do up there, man? Come up for that. He goes, no, nah, I'm good with that. See, when I first moved in with Dane, see, what he knew was when I was in prison, I was on the boxing team. I taught martial arts, and everybody knew that about me. So, and I did some, I did some train, some training guys when I was in there. And so, when he first moved in with me, he's like, "Man, they just moved me in with Roy Bell." He said, "I know I'm gonna learn some jujitsu up in here." And I, I was kind of wasn't on that anymore. That was kind of you know stuff I'd done when I was younger. I was like, you know, I said the cell's kind of small. I'm, you know, I, I said my bruises heal a little slower. I said I'm really not interested in doing that anymore. He goes, "All right, whatever." So I started pressuring him about you know, hey, why don't you come to chapel? And he was like, you know, I might do that if I could get a jujitsu lesson. <laughs> so I had to make a deal with him that once a week, if he would come to chapel, that, uh, um, that I would teach him jujitsu. And uh, Dane was in, and we all, all we're, we're, just, we're just ripped because that's all we do is exercise in prison. And so Dane was a guy that had no tolerance for anybody that was not in perfect physical condition. So I'm even watching TV. They, they would look at somebody and go, oh, look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, that's disgusting. How do they live with themselves? You know, and so the title of this message, he, you know, when something like conversation would like would come up, he said, what do I always say, Roy? He said, life ain't easy when you're fast and greasy. You got that right. So that's where I got this. That was from, from Dane. And so the, when I finally got him to come up, that God gave me this message. 
And I said, I said, you got to come tonight. Tonight's t today's the day you come into chapel today. I said, because I named it, this message specifically for you. He goes, what's your message? I said, life ain't easy when you're fat and greedy. He goes, I'll come. So he came. All right. So that's that's where this came from. Now, five and a half years we were in that cell together. And his dad had passed away right before he came to prison. He had a, a 10 to 25 for winning a gunfight. You know, it was, hey, back in the old west that it said fair fight, go your way. But they gave him 10 to 25 for winning a gunfight. And uh, right before that, his dad had passed away. His dad had been a, very wicked, been a very wicked man, but he got cancer and he was in the hospital and he found the Lord. And, and, he, and, and on, his, in, on his deathbed, as the cancer took him, he had his Bible and, and Dane would come see his dad and his dad, he said, Dane, he said, would you promise me one thing, son, when I'm gone? And he took his Bible, he said, you promise me you'll read this. After I'm gone, you will read the Bible. And so Dane, of course, moves, they, God moves him in with the, with the pastor. And, uh, <laughs> and then we get this going. So he said, well, you know, I promised my dad I'm going to read that Bible. I said, all right. He said, bring me a Bible. I said, I can do that. So I brought him a Bible, and he did. He read, he read, he read Genesis to Revelation. He read the whole Bible through. But it was like this. I was a top, I'm a top bunk guy. He's the bottom bunk guy. I like the little penthouse up there, right? I'd be up there. He's down there reading his Bible, and I hear, tuh, tuh. all right, what? Yo, you're telling me the guy finds a jawbone of an ass, and he goes and kills a thousand dudes, then it turns into a drinking fountain? You believe, you believe this stuff? Get out of here! You know, next day, pfft, what? All right, what? Right. So he can't see good, and so the mom kills kills some uh, some uh, some lambs, and he got this bloody strip of lambskin, and they slap it on his arm, and he goes in, and he feels it, and he can't tell that. Get out of here, man! This stuff ain't real. Five and a half years of that. Okay. So that's. That's where this message came from. Now let's get back into the text. We're, we, we will revisit Dane at the end of the message. Okay, so uh, he was packing, amen. He was strapped. Uh, Jeremiah 48.10 uh, talks about uh, 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 don't uh, uh, keep back his sword from blood, amen. The curse is the man that keeps back his sword from blood. 2 Timothy 4, 2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. 2 Peter 3, 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So, Verse 17 said, <laughs> Eglon <laughs> was a very fat man. And if we want to draw a spiritual uh, parallel here, uh, we would say that Eglon was weighted down with sin. We're going to call, we're going to call Eglon's fat. We're going to call that sin. We're going to call that the, the wickedness, the things of this world. And uh, Hebrews 12, 1 says, uh, uh, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which uh, doth so easily beset us. Psalm 17, 8 through 10 says, Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me from my deadly enemies who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak proudly. So Eglon, Eglon was just, he was just full of sin. That's why he was fat. Eglon was loaded down with sin. Philippians 3, 18 and 19 says, For many walk, whom I told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Eglon was weighted down with the sin of this world. He was full of earthly things, the world. 
So then verses uh, 18 through 21, and uh, when he had made an end to offer the presents, he sent away the people to bear the present, but he himself turned again from the quarries that were uh, by Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, shh, keep silence. He said, and all that stood by and went out from, shh, shh, everybody get out of here, get here, right? And uh, Ehud came unto him. He was sitting in a summer parlor, which he had for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. Remember, he was strapped. And Ehud put forth his left hand. That's that one name they think he was going to use. And took the dagger from his right thigh. And it said he thrust it into his belly. Now, the word thrust is the same Latin word for sermon. Quinky dinky, right? All right? And so what he did, he gave, he gave old Ehud a sermon. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> he got a message from God for you, brother. Wham! <laughs> he delivered his sermon. Amen. He delivered his message. <laughs> and uh, Matthew 10, 16 says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. 2 Corinthians 12, 16 says, Being crafty, I caught you with guile. Amen. 2 Timothy 2, 24 and 25 said, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the Truth. You got to see that that he he didn't just run it, kick the door uh, uh, of Eglon's palace and summer garden. He didn't just come with a wave and his sword around and kick the door in and run across the room and stabbed him. He 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 set the thing up. He used some of the wisdom that God gave him to uh, to to get in close and uh, Amen. And sometimes that's what we got to do with people that we're trying to deliver the message of God to. Hey, we got to get in close enough to get the sermon in, Amen. Close enough to strike and and it's a lot of times it's we're we're like it's like sneaking up on a on a wild animal. Uh, you got to sometimes you got to take your time. Look, hey. We go. We fixing the street preach Sunday. Hey, there's a time to stand out there and just shotgun it, but you're one on one. You know, I said, know them the labor among you. You got to You got it. Sometimes you got to take it one step at a time, like coming up on a like on a wild animal. Don't you don't spook them, don't scare them off, don't offend them. Come on in, you know. Hey, but once you get in there close enough. <laughs> Yes. Deliver! Amen. Deliver that sermon! Deliver that sword! Amen! Hey, strike deep! Strike for the heart! Don't water it down! Amen. Amen. Isaiah 58 1 says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Isaiah 55 and 11 said, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Verse 22. Oh, okay, we'll go back to 21. And he had put forth his left hand. He took, the, he took the dagger from his right thigh and he thrust it into his belly. And the haft also went in after the blade and the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. And the dirt came out. <laughs> Well, Brothers, sisters, <laughs> where the word enters in, <laughs> the dirt comes out. Amen. 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 Hey, John 15, 3, Jesus says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto Amen. you. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27 said, Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water 
by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So notice also that when he, when he thrust that word in, that message in, it said that the haft went in after the blade and the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. That word went in, but it didn't come back out. Amen. He, he delivered the word of God. And, the, and, and he had to let go. The Word of God stayed where he delivered it, and it did its job, and the dirt came out. Amen. Revelation 19, 11 through 16. said, I saw heaven open, behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him, and upon, upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword. And with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath it on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the word is coming back with the sword, and everybody has to pick a side. All right, yeah. you go you and and guess what? For those that aren't on his side, life ain't easy when you're fat and greasy. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So now we now we, we we come to the closing, and we'll finish we'll finish Dan's story. I got out of prison a little over three years ago, so I left Dane behind. It was like, oh brother, man, he didn't make his parole board. It was like. We actually both went to the parole board at the same time. They let me go because of COVID. You'll hear the whole story. But because he had a murder, they didn't let him go. And I, I and it was like basically it was during COVID, and there were anybody that didn't have a body somewhere, they were letting us go. But the guys, the guys that had killed somebody, they were, you know, they 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 were keeping them in. And so I said, all right, brother, you know, I got you, man. And I did for over three years. Uh, I, I continued to write him. Call him. I mean, we, we had become closer than brothers, but he still wasn't saved. But then he made his parole board here just right around uh, Resurrection Sunday or Easter time, as you might well say. Uh, he made his parole board. And um, so uh, he's excited. But he's, he, you know, he's been in prison all his life. He just did 16 years. He doesn't have anybody. And, but so we got him set up. We got him in a, we got him in a, a Christian halfway house. Uh, and the day came, he came from prison, he was on that bus, and he got off that, he got off the prison van. I picked him up there at the parole office, and it was a Monday. And it just so happened, Pastor, that it was a Monday family night potluck. Imagine that. So here's 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 my friend Dane, who ain't had a home cooked meal in 16 years. He gets off the prison bus in my car. I take him to the church. Now he knows my pastor and he, everybody knows because my pastor used to come out to the prison. That's how I know my pastor. And uh, so Pastor Mitch Service, Bible Baptist Church, Las Vegas, Nevada. I brought him right there. We all knew he was getting out. Everybody was waiting on him. And this potluck was almost like a welcome home Dane potluck. And, and he came in there and the church just embraced him and loved him. And boy, he got to, he got to go down that, you know, and the Muslims sued us a lot of years ago, so we're not allowed to have pork in the prison system anymore, you know. So he, he it, it, and one of the things that was on the menu there was this big, was pulled pork, was this plate. And we, we, they got done, and the ladies, they, he was telling them, because man, I had had pork in 16 years, and, and when it was all done, they picked up a bag like that. They said, he, he, he got to take back to the halfway house, that whole bag of pulled pork, right? But, 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 but he was so loved on. And, 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 and I'd, I'd, 
I've been loving on him for five and a half years in that bathroom. <laughs> two, two, two guys living in this little bathroom. And, uh, and, and, and then when I got out, I didn't leave him behind. You know, when I got out, I continued to be whatever he needed out here. And there was business stuff and social security stuff and this check and whatever he needed. Eh? He has somebody he can call, take care of his stuff out here. So this was probably just about two weeks before Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday morning, you know, there's people who are going to just come on Christmas and Easter, right? So, uh, so you know, your pastor always going to preach a real good salvation message, Resurrection Sunday morning, right? And my, my pastor did. And uh, he preached that good salvation message, and they gave the altar call. And, you know, we preachers. When they give the altar call and you're the preacher, you go to the altar. I mean, even if you don't have anything to get right, maybe you'll just get the flow going, right? Don't we do that, guys? All right. So altar call, I'm a, you know, that's just kind of the part of the job. You, you come to the altar, all right? Yeah. So I go to the altar, and I'm down there praying, and now he's, getting really break, now he's really breaking down. You know, now if there's anybody out here, you show a hand, you, you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, but this morning, you want to get that right? You want to make, make and, and I hear Dan's voice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Pastor, Pastor said, here he sees me down here. I look up at him. He's looking at me like, <laughs> get it. <laughs> and so, Dane, Dane comes down the aisle. He's a hard man. He's a serious guy. He's, he comes down, he comes down that aisle. And he, he kneels down to me, with me there at that altar. And tears coming down his face. I said, brother, I said, there ain't nothing else left to say, is there? He said, no. I said, you ready? He said, yeah. Amen. And uh, Resurrection Sunday morning this year, yeah. I, got to, I got to sit there at the old fashioned altar. <laughs> and I got to lead my brother to Christ. And I'm here to report today, he has since been scripturally baptized. He's in church every Sunday. He, he, people say you don't even look like the same guy that he has the, the holy brow, the glow of his countenance. People see it every day. And he is just like night and day. Uh, he's become a new man. And uh, uh, so that that one took some sneaking up on. Yeah. <laughs> That one, that one, that one. I couldn't just run, run, kick the door in. You need to get saved. Okay, let's go now. But um, that's what God will do, yes, and and He'll do that with the wrong-footed, crook back, yeah. short leg, Amen. flat, flat nose, or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, he's not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability yeah. today. Amen. And uh, hey, and and don't worry about the world. We we. We ain't never gonna be the cool kids. Amen. I don't want to, and I don't, and, and I don't want to be Amen. anyway. Amen. Uh, I I want to be, the, I want to be, I want to be the one that God uses. And there's nothing this world can offer uh, like the joy of what I got, what I got to do. Yeah. That Sunday resurrection, Martin, you know, yes. is 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 change someone's eternal destiny Amen. by sticking them real good. Amen. Okay, God bless you. Amen. Good breath. I'll never act close again. Thank you. Thank you.